Welcome back here. We'll continue to have an outstanding conversation with this man of Jacksonville. Give your name again. Zaki Furquan. Okay, I won't have to try to pronounce that off the cuff, but I do eventually learn to pronounce those great Muslim names. What does your name mean, by the way? It means, Zaki means pure and intelligent. Furquan means the distinguish between right and wrong. And how did you first go into the faith of Islam? I mean, were you like young when you first did it or, or late on in life? No, no, no. I was very young. Okay. You grew uh, up the, in the, it? The, the, the way that one becomes Muslim or the way one is acknowledged by Muslim. It, your parents can be Muslim, but that don't necessarily mean that the child is Muslim. There's a declaration of faith that's called the Shahada, and I took my Shahada at the age of 17. Okay. And you stayed faithful. You yes, stayed sir. with it. Yes, sir. Because it, it's, I mean... Seem like a really disciplined religion. Yes, sir. Does that discipline translate into the way you go about conducting your life outside of your religion? It just kind of follows you throughout your business principles and everything else? It follow it is Islam is a way of life. It's not just something I pick up when I'm in the morning or when I'm at home. You know, it's three sixty five. Islam is a way of a complete way of life. So whatever I do in my life, Islam is present. Okay. The landscaping business that you've been so successful at, and yes. uh, if people are watching us now on social media, mm -hmm. uh, of course, my show airs here locally in southwest Florida and the surrounding seven counties. We're yes, going sir. to a little over a million households that are okay. watching on TV, yes, sir. but also it appears on social media, so people may be seeing you in Duval or wherever they see you. Mm -hmm. What's, is there a website or some kind of way that they can tap into your services? Yes, it is. Uh, we are a full-service landscape and alarm maintenance business we uh six trucks 25 employees we service duval st john's and clay and our website is www.flllminc.net and then a basic old phone number 904-343-9714 you're off camera you can keep moving uh, when they come through you can just give them the hand the um, let's go to what when we say full service landscaping business, what does that entail? Full, full lawn service, service and landscaping lawn maintenance is mean that we do everything from cut your grass. If it's a new development, we install trees, we install grass, sprinkler systems, etc. Trees too, huh? Yes, sir. Okay, so you really take care. Now, my home, I have a person that come. You know, like they on contract basically. Yes, sir. That's that's pretty common. That's a good way to go about it. Isn't it? Where you just what they come every week, something like that, every two weeks. Yes, um, we do. We do on a very small, a very small amount of residential. Mm -hmm. However, our biggest service, excuse me, is commercial contracts. We are uh, employees or employed by or contract with. Uh, places like the state of Florida, the city of Jacksonville, the electrical authorities. We do governmental contracts mm -hmm. for the most part. You're registered with this uh, Florida marketplace. You're a minority yes, registered DBE, I think we would call them. Yes, sir. Right. You got you, you You know where you're at, right? Yes, sir. All right. It's a lot of opportunity there, right? Yes, sir. What do you say to people, young people listening to you right now, who where they, wherever they may be in the country, who may consider developing the type of business that you have done and growing that business, but they may think that is impossible. Go. Anything's possible. You can accomplish what you will, as I early on stated. But there's, as a, you have to be focused. You got to learn how to cut out the distraction. And one of the most uh, potent information I read, I read a book uh, by Dr. Napoleon Hill at the age of 17. It's called Think and Grow Rich. And there was a caption in there that changed my life forever where he stated that if man or woman can control their sexual desires and urges, they can unravel the genius within them. <laughs> did, did, you, did that mean, take that a little farther, meaning what? Meaning that if you all your concentration is in your little head and not using your big head, then you're not going to be successful because you're going to be having baby mamas, extra baby mamas, giving money away you know i retain a lot of money so my my only <laughs> habit is to save money and travel that's those are my habits you have made history too as 
in the toilet tissue business that we don't think about, but everybody uses it all the time. Exactly. Talk about how you just um, made history, and we're so proud of it you. It was really, in my household, I have a, just for clarity, I have a wife and five children. At the time, I had three children, and my children would be wowed by all of the things that they see. For example, the paintings on the wall, they're like, oh, wow, oh, wow. I'm you can like, get you a chair if you want, man. What is, what is the... Why are you so excited about other people's product? Mm-hmm. We go create. Let's create something for you to be excited for. So we we created a truck and a trailer, and as people we were riding down the street, it was about the toilet paper, and we were riding down the street, and everybody was eyes were glued to our our truck and trailer. I said, "See, sir, you can accomplish whatever you want to in this world." And so after that, there by then, then I had I had tried to uh, just do a private label. Is all I wanted to do. And I was having some problems because of my skin color. When people look at my name, they were like, oh, it's like he may be he may be Indian or something, you know. But, you know, when they find out about, you know, hey, this is African American, then, you know, the conversation went down. I was never able to get any traction, just a private label. So I uh, boarded the plane, went to Panama. I got some information in Panama. I went to, I boarded the plane and went to China. And China was able to work with me. I bought something from the people from China. It was necessarily, <laughs> didn't work out right. So I actually, had to learn myself how to develop uh, toilet paper. So I went and did my own study, my research, and I took something to back to the people in China for them to make it for me. Why toilet paper? Toilet paper because toilet paper, you, you, you buy it, you use it, you run out, you can't recycle it, and you got to buy it again. I'm just a fan of, of non-recyclable products. I've always been a fan of paper. You know, people go in the hand, they go in the bathroom, they grab five, six napkins, which they only really need two. They ball them up, wall them up, they throw it away. That's the expense that somebody else got to pay. Mm-hmm. I like that. Okay. When I when um, when I say okay, toilet paper, I will say in my mind, I want you to tell me how to think, because you think differently from the average person. That's what that that allows you to succeed too. Mm-hmm. The way you think, and I know you got that from that book as well, right. Napoleon. Right. I read the book, uh, The Magic of Thinking Big That's by right. Dr. Schwartz. That's right. And uh, we all, we can tell when certain people have been exposed to certain things. It's about conditioning in your mind, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So when a typical person would say, hey, there's plenty of toilet paper around here. That's not a market for that for me. Uh, I see all this toilet paper when I go through the grocery stores and so on and so forth. And on all types of hand papers and so on. Tell us how you looked at that and saw it totally different as an opportunity. I mean, I don't see competition. I mean, marketing is you. People are not buying the product. They're buying you. So I solicited myself and the people were, were impressed or enthused to buy the product. So no matter what, I, what I've what i done in my life, it's always been they have been buying me because I'm at least convincing enough of, and knowledgeable enough about the product that I'm selling. So when people say just toilet paper, you know, they, like, they ask my wife, like, why toilet paper? <laughs> I say because, again, they buy it, they use it, you can't recycle cycle it, you run out and you got to buy it again. And, mm-hmm. and the reason why I'm so fascinated with papers is because my, I have twin boys, my oldest two children, and when they were young, you know, in their teenage years, I mean, I'm sorry, in their, their toddler years, diapers were kind of expensive. I was buying $40 worth of diapers out of Sam. And di- diaper is a paper product. So I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to keep buying this paper, like this, this diapers like this. So I met with a manufacturer, and I bought their seconds. So I've always been a fan of paper product, how people are just careless in their use to it, and it's, it's a lot of benefit financially with it. Okay, so you the first African American, one of the first African Americans to get into that industry, and, number one, and and also by you being a registered business with the Florida, the state of Florida, and already have a clientele of commercial businesses that you do landscaping for, was that a a a, a perfect transition for them to also buy your paper product? Uh, actually, not. This is a total different entity okay uh it was this was created for my children and the the client even though the clientele is somewhat the same but you can't contract with somebody just because of the fact that you you cut the grass or you install some trees it's a total different contract for paper products you know uh, what they call them uh commodity codes the commodity codes are not the same so they don't just transfer but it is uh relationship based it's easier 
Like, oh, he has something new. He has a new product. He has a new opportunity based on people knowing me, but I haven't benefited just because of the fact that we used to service the property or something. Okay, I guess to get to the meat and potatoes of this, who is your customer right now? How, does, how, how do you get customers? You, you manufacture your own paper. Yes, you sir. manufacture your own toilet paper. Yes, sir. You got, it's, it's got a name to it, like yes, Sherman sir. or whatever. Yes. You, what's the name of yours? Uh, Blissful Paper Product. Okay. And, and the company is called Three's Company. Okay. And if people listening to this right now, and they want to get that product to not only to just, just say, hey, I saw the guy who created it on television. I want right. to support him. Can, how can they get your product? Is uh, it on store shelves or what? No, we're not. Nothing that I do is store shelf. <laughs> Everything we do is contract. I need the longevity. So uh, one of our first clients was the uh, city of Jacksonville. We were the first African American to sell to the city of Jacksonville, then onto the school board, then onto the airport. And by the way, my wife runs the company. And uh, then now we service the state of Florida. What does the state of Florida mean? That means you you did that you all, did that business up in Tallahassee. N- no, we, we yeah that's right. We won the contract in Tallahassee, but we service the state of Florida with. All of its paper product needs, not just toilet paper. That's toilet paper, paper towel, napkins, jumbo roll, C fold, N fold, any fold you ever seen or roll. And that we service all of the prison institutions. We service all of the ju- juvenile justice, all of the health agencies. Uh, we do right here in Lee County. I've been here multiple times uh, myself. How did you get that contract? I, I heard you say you, you. I know you went into the bidding process. Did you have to undercut your pricing, or you able to produce a high quality product at a both it's in volume for one it's a large volume of paper products that you have to distribute to them in addition to the large volume we have uh you have to compete against your competition to find out who has the best price so we didn't reduce our price we just beat somebody else's price that's all and before you know it you had that big contract how long have you had that contract with the state uh that's a two years of 10 Two years of ten. Yes, it's a ten-year contract. We've been into the contract. Just oh, okay, two years. Ten, ten whole years. Yes, sir. Has it been all that you expected to be in terms of return on investment? Uh, it's been a struggle because of some of the the previous contractors interfering or what have you, and uh, the state being non-negotiable at some time and not wanting to give an increase. Uh, however, we have navigated through some of those challenges in this. It's doing very well now. Okay, before we wrap this up, you were talking about going over to China. Yes, sir. And I think China was producing your product? Yes, sir. Go through that for us so we can hear how you did this. Because at first you were, it, it was a point before our battery ran out that you were having a problem getting it manufactured, if I'm not mistaken. No, I was having a problem in America just trying to get it private label. And private label means that I can go into the Charmin manufacturer and t- instead of putting Charmin on the plastic, they'll put Blissful Paper product on the plastic. And which is a lot of people do. You go into Publix, you see the Publix brand of beans versus- Walmart beans. and everywhere, Everybody right. Everybody does private labeling to some extent. So that's all I was requiring in the beginning. But then they wouldn't, because of skin color, in uh-huh. my opinion, they didn't want to further the communication with me. So, uh, but they were doing it for other people. Yeah, you know, they do it for everybody. Yeah, they do it for everybody. <laughs> so, me. so uh, I didn't hesitate to. There's a fair that they have in China twice a year, which is very what you know. China is the world's shopping center. It's just I was the only African American there, though. but everybody else was there shopping, buying goods. By the container, by the truckload, et cetera, et cetera. So when I went there, it was very, it was very pleasing for one, because everybody was like, "Who is this guy? Mm-hmm. Well, who you is this guy?" Like you know, I stood thumb. out like a sore thumb. Everybody wanted to know the kids mm-hmm. would come, you know, after school, and mm-hmm. they'd be like, "Everybody thought I was NBA. Like, are you NBA? Are you NBA?" I was like, "NBA is like <laughs> national basketball. I mean, national. I never thought of basketball because they say, "Are you NBA?" Not uh-huh. like." Do you play in the NBA? Uh-huh. So I could have wrote that line. Yeah, I mean, you know, play for the 
whatever, but I mm-hmm. didn't do that. But so, you know, they they always ask me, I was like, no, I'm, I'm a businessman. You know? That's the importance of travel, man, international travel. You get to see all these different cultures and learn how people yes. see things. Like when I was in Africa, and, and you know, of course I had a television show, and when they found out I was a TV talk show host in Africa, Cape Town, Johannesburg, Soweto, along the way, Whenever they saw me with my cameras, docu- doing interview, right. do you know you from? And they hear my accent. You American? Do you know Oprah Winfrey? Yeah. Do you know Snoop Dogg? <laughs> do you know Jay Z? <coughs> just, yes, just so much fascination with American mm-hmm. culture, mm-hmm. and people don't realize that until you travel, right? Yes. And uh, but you having your height, they put you with the NBA. Yeah, NBA. <laughs> and, and some of them were asking me if I was GI. You know, because from the military guys that had been over there over the years, like you right. GI, are you GI, <laughs> GI. Right. You know, that was when I was in uh, in in, uh, in Paris. But anyway, um, back to you got rejected here local in America from being able to get your own label, right? Because you wanted to get your own label because you right. knew where you were going with that, and you knew yes. that you had opportunity for procurement opportunity there right. too. So you, then you are already a minority contractor, so you already know how the system works. So now. If you get that, do you think that they're also trying to block you because they knew that you could conceivably uh, t- be a big player in the market once you got that, got your product? Uh, all of that is inclusive, uh, what you just spoke of. But more importantly, they, it's just that this is white collar crime. Nobody does this. With, with I'm, I was the first one in the game, so there's nobody else in the game, and they were basically just blocking. Mm-hmm. They were on offense and blocking. I'm like, what you, <laughs> you, you controlling the narrative? Why is it that you block it, trying to block me? So it it comes with a lot. So I've never been the guy that's gonna kiss somebody's butt to get and, and give you my money at the same time. That don't work for me. So I was able to you know form a relationship and a partnership. Uh, with the people in China, which ultimately led to us developing a product and doing better. And now that we've broke in, that we've got it, now we have people stateside that has and will and excitedly, willingly to produce our product. Mm -hmm. They see all that volume there. Yeah, the volume is there. So, you know, we go places and, you know, you tell them the volume and they be like, did you say that again? Yeah, we need need 15,000 cases in like two weeks can you do that mm-hmm. and they don't say that much in six months mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying so we we outstripping the numbers and the volume that they're used to doing so mm-hmm. it gives us great uh hope you know even though we still develop you know in China but it still does the state side does give us a lot of benefit as well okay so you, you're getting your product from both places yes sir okay you're gonna have some loyalty to China but you still got that shipping cost built in from for China and the whole international product coming from overseas and all yeah, that. Yeah, the tariffs, et cetera, et cetera. Right. I mean, you know, there's a way around that. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're probably saying this guy, I'm talking like a businessman, right? No, yeah. I don't you know, know right. if you know this, but I did tell you off camera that I used to work in banking in Jacksonville. That's correct. Okay. So, so at the crest of my career in the corporate world, I was a senior vice president. Oh, okay. Uh, corporate lending, large corporate corporations. I, I did business loans to them. Yes. Uh, starting at 15 million and above. Wow. So as a part of my training, I have a master's degree in finance, MBA. Okay. So it's a part of my training as a as a vice president and working in the corporate industry for 30 years. I I learned a lot about how business operates because of course we have to make decisions on loans. So right. you know about. I'm just kind of bringing out some of my background right. in yeah, no analyzing corporations and understanding costs and and procurement, you hear me saying stuff like procurement right, and, right. and DBEs and Florida marketplace and all this stuff. So you right. kind of give you some concept of I'm more than just a pretty face on right, TV. Right, right, <laughs> right. I would agree. I like to joke about that every now and then because <laughs> uh, all of that real world stuff allows me to do the type of television show that I've been doing for years and it's been real successful. Uh, not reading a teleprompter, but being able to go there. And then me and you found a commonality on the type of books that we've read when you talked about Napoleon and I talked about the magic of thinking big and all right. these types of uh, books that, that determine how your mind work uh, and it allows you to achieve a lot of things. Like, like for, for example, right now we're on this television show, right? Yes. Sir. Uh, and we're on Fox 4. Okay. But my television show is not owned by Fox 4. That's right. It just airs on Fox 4. I own That's the show. Right. It's wholly owned by me, Lee Pitts. You see what I'm saying? And you yes, understand sir. what that means. Not every exactly. person wouldn't understand what that means. But that's a trailblazing thing to have a, a local television show wholly owned by African American. There is no local television show 
in the state of Florida on broadcast television. I'm not talking about on some cable channel. I don't know about the cable channels around, but on broadcast TV, which is ABC, NBC, Fox, uh, NBC, and PBS, yes. there is no local show in the state of Florida owned by an individual on broadcast TV. Yes, sir. So not saying uh, African American, just owned by an individual right. that's on broadcast television, except for this show that you're on right now. Right. So it, it gives, uh, and this is the first time I've ever said it on TV, I don't really go around saying it. I just let people think that the, the, the big company owns the show and that's fine with me, it doesn't matter as long as I'm doing type of stuff I need to do. To have you as a historic figure to tell your story in yes, this platform, on this particular show, my audience is inspired by you, bro. Praise be to God. And so you keep up the good work, and uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity to make any final comments you'd like to make about this conference, about anything you've experienced while being down here. Uh, did you go to the gala last night? Yes, I did. Fort Myers is almost my second home. I've probably almost moved here like twice because I'm very fascinated by the work that Mr. Muhammad has done here. Uh, it's always inspiring me to another level. He's a solid mentor of mine. I love Fort Myers. It reminds me of Jacksonville with all the beaches and the things there. And but I'm inspired by greatness that happened. And this this is it's a great conference. It's a great uh, process to see the new building, 1.4 million dollars. And some of the people in the room last night that. The lady said she'll give a half a million if you can match it. I mean, so these things are exciting, and it caused tears literally to me to cry. To hear, I cry when I see the underprivileged being able to have an opportunity to achieve because I was brought up in that same space. How did you first meet Imam Abdu'l-Haq Muhammad? Um, I met him at a conference maybe 30 years ago. I mean, yeah, I was a very young kid. I was yeah, maybe maybe 25, 30 years ago I met him, and he, he has been an inspiration ever since. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time. I've, I come to Fort Myers non-conference related. I just come, you know, just to – he's telling me something new is going on. When they did the, ex, the expansion to this building, I came. When they did this, the new building, I came. I came, and he took me to meet the politicians uh, at the city of Fort Myers. It, it's, been, it's just always been here. I've been here probably – in the last 20 years, I've probably been here like 15 times. Man, you got to open up a landscaping business down here, man. Give all these young people opportunity to learn from you. Ironically I, uh, you, speaking. I, it's, been run, it's been running through your head already? Ironically speaking, when I was coming down here, uh, on my way to, to here, just looking at the landscape, I was telling uh, my partner how I got to develop myself. I do very well for myself. My family is doing, we do well. But I was like, I need to. Develop. I just scored one of the largest landscaping contracts in Jacksonville, but I was thinking, I was like, I got to score going to another city, That's opening right. up another city. It's easy to get to Nassau, Duval, Clay County. I mean, they all, it's like a tri county, mm -hmm. but they'd be able to transfer out to places like uh, Fort Myers, where there's a lot of rich people here, there's a lot of money. I need to get that development piece under my, under my belt. So I was thinking about opening up in Fort Myers because we do. With my landscaping and lawn maintenance company, we we service, no, excuse me, we aid the underprivileged. That meaning that we hire the unemployable, those that have no skills, those that have a criminal background, those that how to, and we and change and improve their lives. So, you know, and they always, people are always saying that, you know, when they get grow up, they want to be like me. I tell them, don't waste your time trying to be like me. Do better than me. So my, my staff are always inspired on a daily basis to try to do something. There has been a few of my staff that has, they have been courageous enough and inspired enough by what I've done to go out and develop their own landscape and alarm maintenance and pressure washing business or whatever, because they, I would do, I could take anything by God's grace and transfer it into a hundred thousand dollars, you know, from t-shirts to cups to water. I don't, it don't make a difference. <laughs> I'm gonna do something with the, the information that I have in my background. I can accomplish what I will. My man. I'm going to leave it at that. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum as -salam. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been in tune to the Lee Pitt Show. Lee Pitt Live, baby.